back in the day There's not a tea in my way I don't seem to care for what I did before Playing tennis in a thunderstorm Sipping gin till the break of dawn As I learn to free, let's ease it up And hello, as you've already seen, we're looking at the ox stomp, which is something I've been waiting for for a long time, and many of you have, because it it just is good. I, I, what else am I going to say? Okay, so I've been using the ox as my main speaker simulator slash load box for a long time. It has issues, it has problems in its product design. However, I feel because of certain things like the room and the EQing and the built-in effects, it is the premier thing to use. However, now it went up in price. It was $12.99 or something and, and therefore already one of the more expensive boxes on the market or the most expensive box on the market. Now it's $14.99 and it's like, why in the world? It's a lot, but it's right there together with others. What are the problems with the ox? Well, in the beginning, it had nothing for the metal guys. And now it's, hmm, because the people designing it are old school guys, which makes sense. They, they do what they know best, old school sounds. All the presets are Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, uh, Pink Floyd, uh, The Who, all that stuff. Nothing in any way modern. You can't get modern sounds out of it, but you got to make them. They don't give them to you. So they did add V30s later. What other problems are there? No MIDI, what the crap? No XLR out, no rack mountability. It's literally on a shelf. It's not mounted, it's sitting on a shelf. It's got optical out and SPDIF out with RCA. It's, it's not really a, well, it is a pro tool when you're going optical as SPDIF out, which is what I'm doing. Um, but no XLR out. Yes, it's TRS and it is balanced, but why no XLR? It's like not really a pro studio tool. Then it would also be rack mounted. It's not really a live tool because it would be rack mounted and have MIDI. It maybe it was meant primarily as the tool for the bedroom slash living room player. But many people love the sound so much that they took it with them live anyway. And they use it in a studio anyway. Because sound-wise, once you hear it compared to the competition, you go like, wow, that's the shit. Also, it cannot load IRs. So to anyone who love IRs and have their favorite IRs from Ownhammer or, or whoever, uh, they hate it automatically because I cannot load my own sounds. But the big draw of it to me is that you cannot load that ass because it's doing speaker modeling. It's different. They don't profile speakers. They program them and they program them extremely well. And the thing that nobody does like UA is the room. And the room that you put the speaker in, it's a single room that they have available. It's not a reverb. Reverb's different. Reverb gets put on after everything's recorded. The room that it is mic'd in, that they do in a way that nobody can nail. So that's why the Ox is amazing. Even though it has all these flaws, the sound is where it's at. Now, let me quickly, even though they pay me to make this video, uh, show you some of the competition. Now, Ox 1499. <laughs> Captor X is the shit bang for the buck. I think it's 550 or used to be. Um, it is a load box. So yes, you can run your amp into it. It has stereo out, which means you can do dual cabs and the iron cab or double tracking six presets on it, just like the aux. 
it isn't attenuated in the sense that it's full attenuated and then very quiet. So not the greatest attenuated in the world, but it's there. Bang for the buck compared to the almost three times as expensive ox, this thing has stormed the market and rightfully so because I think in that price range, given that it's an attenuator, a little bit, but definitely a load box and speaker simulator, it, it kills everything else. Now, this has IR loading. But that's not the strength. I don't like just loading in IR and then, okay, that's what that sounds like. Load up the next one, load up the next one until you find the right thing. Because you can't really tweak them too much. And tweakability is really what we're talking about. Now, two notes is this dynamic IRs, meaning it means they have hundreds or thousands of IRs recorded for mics and speakers. And when you move the mics virtually around, you're literally moving through IRs. So that's a much quicker way to get to the point and for me to find the right sound. This is pretty damn good. They have not nailed the room. And they've nailed other things, like it can load our hours if you wanted that. Now, their cheaper or simpler version is the Cab M or Cab M Plus nowadays. This is still the Cab M, but with an update, I could make it the Plus, which means it has power amp simulation built in. It is small. It is, uh, what, 350, 300? I don't know, something like this. Uh, it has pluses it has things over the competition like it's got wait it does not have i thought it has midi it does not have midi why did i think it has midi um it definitely has a little sd card slot where you can load irs into it it's got bluetooth it's got usb so you can actually program it with an app on uh, Mac, PC, uh, Android, iOS, all that stuff. XLR out. It wins over the new Ox Stomp in that regard. It's got a, a line out. It's got a headphone out. Who would have thought that it's convenient to have a headphone out on something like that? An Ox in if you want to jam with things. And you can actually run your amp into it, but it doesn't load up the amp, it does, it's not a load box. So meaning you have to actually go through into a cab or a load box. Otherwise you're killing this or the amp. But then user interface, it's kind of fiddly. And again, it's not an ox. So it isn't like doing the same thing. You know these boxes. Now, how is the ox stomp different? Well, first of all, that's what it looks like. It is different in the, in the regard that it doesn't load IRs. It is 430 euro, last time I checked, brand new on the market. It is ultra simple to operate without menus on the interface itself. And once you have your cabs on your rigs, meaning you've made six rigs, um, you're there. The two-knot stuff has a built-in reverb if you wanted that. This goes much further. I, I can't believe that they actually put the full digital side of the aux in there. Yes, everything the aux has, this is in there, minus the load box aspect, which actually makes it, I feel, the premier thing to use if you're not hunting IRs. If you just want killer sounds, pairing this with a high-end load box is the thing we've been waiting for. And we're going to get into what pairing I suggest later. Now, it has, just like the Ox, got a couple of issues. Like, no MIDI. Talk to a couple of friends and they immediately said, no MIDI, I'm out. How dumb is that? It's pretty dumb. It came from it being based on the Starlight, Golden Reverberator, Astra, uh, the, the same platform. And that platform simply doesn't allow for a headphone out because I never budgeted one in from the beginning. So therefore, the thing that needs a headphone out more than anything else that they've ever made, this thing doesn't have a headphone out. Now, they're going to say you can use the outputs with an insert kind of adapter cable that, of course, you have to buy instead of them giving you one because they are advocating for it. And given the fact that it's 430 bucks, there should be maybe that cable in the box, but there isn't. We're going to try that. I personally haven't. We're going to see if there's enough output I don't have an adapter cable. I'm going to use it mono and see what happens. But yes, maybe you can just use the outputs. I don't think there's enough juice. So 
No MIDI, no headphone out, boo. Obviously no LR loading. But everything else from the aux, meaning dual miking a cap, a single cap. Mo stereo, <laughs> stereo input, stereo output, fuck yeah. What else is stereo? Uh, the Neunaber Iconoclast. And that sounds pretty shitty if you ask me. It sounds DI, it sounds like going directly into a board. I couldn't even review it because I, that's, much, that's how much I didn't like it. Um, it has EQ on each of the two mics. Yes, it has two mics. Um, and more than you see on, on the box. It has EQ on the mics, uh, 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 um, angle, high pass filter. It has a master EQ. It has an 1176 style compressor. It has a killer stereo delay slash chorus slash phaser. And it has a plate reverb. So meaning things you want behind your amp, compressor, great delay, great reverb. I always get asked, what delay did you just turn on? What delay did you just turn on? Hey, what delay did you just turn on? Uh, it's usually the one in the aux, which is in that stomp. That alone makes it without competition. And then it's got the room. Speaker drive, okay, if you're into that, I don't know how much that matters, but they're really like, oh my God, the speaker drive, you can de deter de determine that. Well, fine. The sounds is what's there. So if you can live without MIDI and you can live without the dedicated headphone out and you already have a load box, Yes, if you have like an Iron Man from Tone King or an Amp Central from Red 7, which we're going to use, or you have uh, maybe even a Captor X, which you can use as your load box, and then maybe go in there if you like these sounds more, including the effects. Or you have, and that's where we really get into it, the Fryette Power Station, which is, I think, because it's tube-powered when it comes to attenuation, and it's really cool. Uh, reactive load uh, fiddling. That's probably the thing to get when it comes to load boxes, but it has no simulation. It only has a DI out. So use the best load box on the market, which is possibly the Freyhead Power Station. And then buy this, and here's the kicker, you are actually at the price of the ox. However, you have a better load box, tube powered, it's the power station, right, right, right there, is the shit, and then you have the sounds that are the shit. I know, long intro, now we're going to get into it. How does it work? Well, you hook it up with USB-C to your computer to register it and update it, but sadly, then you can't do anything on the computer. There isn't an editor for the computer, which, uh, for your desktop, which really sucks, because the editor they have for the aux, I have a cheat sheet here for Gear Street because we're using the aux at Gear Street in all three rooms. Yes, I've got three of them now. You have this beautiful editor, very visual, uh, can't use it because there's only an iPad and an Android app or iOS and Android app. Uh, hmm, hmm. It does a job, but I wish there was a desktop one because they already had a desktop one. Why not just port it with a couple of tweaks to work with the stump and then just it recognizes which one you're connecting. So on the actual thing, you've got a room knob, which you want as a knob. Do, do you want the speaker knob as a national knob? I don't know. Speaker drive? I don't know. Apparently the speakers start to drive themselves at a certain input level. Output is something you continuously want to adjust depending on uh, your rig if you haven't set up the levels yourself. And then very simple, there's six rigs and the rig includes everything. The speaker, all the settings, all the EQs, and the mics, and the effects, and that's really where your presets are. Of course, you can't change them with MIDI. You can't add more. You can't have more than six other than using the app, and then you've got loads of them, and we're going to look at that. Then you've got mic one and mic two, and you can go dynamic, condenser, and ribbon, which technically means SM57, U87, and a 121 because that's what it switches to. I don't know if you can change those uh, favorites. And then for the second one, you can do the same thing. So you quickly could just get those three, you know, let's do dynamic, let's do ribbon, get a level, and you're done. You do want to set up your own sounds in the app, 
put it on there and then have control. These would be usually rig one, rig two, so rig A or rig B. I don't think I need that because I'll just tweak, uh, tweak the knob. So that means you can actually change them. You could do rig A, B, rig C, D. So you could actually, with your feet, you don't need many, then maybe I have access to four different presets. However, I like to have access to delay and reverb. So right now, it, this, this doesn't change any presets. It just turns my delay and reverb on. And you can do that in the app and determine what the foot switches do. Pretty cool, You on all the UA pedals, you tailor it to what you want it to do with the foot switches. Sorry this is such a long intro, but I've covered most of these boxes on the market, so therefore uh, people usually come to the channel for an AB comparison, and I'm sorry UA, but I had to hold these up to give people a, uh, a baseline, because these are great boxes. However, I think that you just broke the market with the Ox Stomp, because pairing this with any kind of load box is what I've been waiting for. You might have been waiting for that too, unless you like IRs. In that case, turn this video off because it doesn't do that. It does speaker modeling. So we're gonna do three different things here. We're gonna go uh, get a Strat, get some clean sounds, and I'll show it to you with a UA pedal, UA amp pedal. Then we're gonna go and take a different preamp pedal directly into it, and then, we're gonna go real amps, and I'll show you how that works. And we're gonna actually make a heavy sound, which I haven't done, and we're gonna build that. So, for now, we can see on the table that there's a wood row, and the wood row is very spiky and a little bit icky when you're driving it. So clean it's very good, but it doesn't stay clean too long, but that's because of the built-in uh, speaker modeling IR sounds, and it's not my ass. Uh, and I think that James Santiago, the guy behind this stuff, just likes all that trebly uh, uh, top end and those classic sounds with a lot of the uh, scratchy top end. I don't. I like it rounded off. And with the built-in speakers, you can't do that. If you put the Ox Stomp behind it, check out what I can do. So I'm going to just go to Rig 1, turn this off. I'm going into the Woodrow, and then... Stereo out of the Woodrow, stereo out of the Ox Stomp, directly into my interface. What is that? That's a cream bag loaded for 12, might with a 57 and a 121. Why? Because I tried to build the sound that I have in my Ox, um, that I've been playing for years and rebuild it in the Ox Stomp, which of course I can do, except that the EQ is slightly different, the different frequencies, and it's 98% there. And I mean, come on. And I personally think that the Woodrow sounds phenomenally better. It already sounds pretty damn good, but I think now, holy shit, I feel it's on a whole different level. It, does that feel like a real amp? Does it feel like this thing with, with, with the aux or something? I, to me, it does. And this is how easy I can do the reverb. And stereo delay. Again, that's how I set up the uh, foot, foot footprints. No, foot switches. Let's look at the other presets in there. Mm -hmm. 
What is that? We don't know yet, but we'll see in a minute when, once we look at the app. Thinner. That's why I like mine. Now, clean, they're all kind of, they're, they're very similar. Once we crank up the drive, which I never liked on the wood roll, let's see what happens. Now, it's still, of course, a tweed style vintage drive. It's not rock or metal, but it's so much more pleasing to my ears than what comes out of the Woodrow by itself. <laughs> So let's switch the three mics on the left side. Why did this sound so different? Well, because I applied internal EQ, and that's really where uh, I asked just, I mean, yes, an IR loader can have an IR, and then you can apply EQ to it. It's, for me, it's different. They're doing something different. When it comes to the digital stuff, you know, 20 odd something years of development at UA, they, they know what they're doing. is a nicely rounded sound. That's the cab I've been using for years. Let's look at some others here that are into. Why is that a preset? clearly meant for clean sounds. Also, some of that top end, I, I don't know why they go for that. Nothing is as rounded and again pleasing to my ears than the one that I built. So in the effects often we're going to look at that room that I've been talking about. So that's the your typical sound that you can expect from other boxes similar to this. Let's do this.
There you don't hear the room directly, but it does add dimension. Now we hear the room. And I do firmly believe that it's way more than applying a reverb. It takes a lot of stuff into account. Uh, I don't know what, but it does. I'm pretty sure because reverb is something that's applied after and not part of the whole recording process. <laughs> can see I've done all this directly on the box itself. Impressive? I would say yes. So now we're going to look at how to program it, for which we're actually going to go with a different preamp. So we're going to go into a realm that I haven't done. I'm going to go take the Friedman IRX, turn the built-in IR off, and see what we can get out of this brilliant high-voltage 12-volt powered tube preamp if we put the aux stomp behind it. Inside the Friedman, there's also a digitally done kind of power amp simulation, and we're gonna go with a different guitar as well. So here we are, and uh, we can already tell that what I had before now needs some tweaking for that preamp that we're using. IR is off in the Friedman, and we're going direct out into the aux stomp, but I would have to tweak that in terms of the top end, which is easy to do. So let's look at the app. We're not going to switch cameras around too much because I'm going to have to put it right next to me. As you can see, those are the six presets that we got, and if I switch on the actual pedal, it goes between them. You can go to factory, and there are loads and loads and loads more. So I have no idea. Pristine clean room. I think they are, of course, done by cabs. Let's see. No idea why they think that's wide and something drop C. I wouldn't trust modern uh, presets with the UA people. That's just not their thing, and that's totally fine. Gonna go to uh, back here. Gonna go back to. Oh nope. Oh why why why? Oh, I assigned that to preset one. Didn't want to do that. I'm gonna go to user. Go to back to cream back default. And there we are now that's assigned to one again. Let's try that with some gain. It needs some tweaking, but okay. So back to E. Let's go to this 112.50s twang. Oh, by the way, in settings, this is where you can say what the foot switches do, A or B, delay and reverb, A, B, C, D, uh, or switch between A and B and 
uh, reverb, blah, 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 blah. Uh, then that's really all that you can do here. Back up your rigs, and that's about it. So now we're going to go to edit. <laughs> Let's look at master, and you can see my master actually changes the slider. On the phone, using uh, your finger with the sliders, it very quickly gets annoying, which is why I really would advocate for a desktop app to program this much more easily. So here's 112s, 212s, 412s, and they're right there. And then you've got your mic. Let's quickly make that up. So you got mic one, and you can see again this changes the level. You also have pan for mic one because it's fully stereo. <laughs> Now, there isn't really massive mic positioning, which, if it sounds good, is fine for me. You've got a low cut and you've got off axis or on axis. I'm usually on off, uh, off axis. Of course, mic positioning is where a lot of the sound is, but if it's right, it's right. And I think it's right. Then you open this and you've got your EQ. High, mid, low, mid, low, and high cut, low cut. Uh, I fiddled around with the high cut for quite a while. I wasn't doing anything because you actually have to turn it on, as you can see. And then you turn it on and off, and then it does stuff. So we might want, depending on what we're doing. In this case, maybe we want a little bit more. The EQ is highly effective and it'll get you to where you want to be. So where am I here? I'm on the 57. You're going to see once I switch on the pedal, 57, 67, and ribbon. Question is, can I make the 421 my favorite dynamic mic? Is there any way to do this? I don't... So I can go 421, but I have to do it in the app. It only gets this one mic happening. Four twenty one. Four fourteen. Six seven. One sixty. And if you wanted to go out DI on one side, something you can do with the Captor X, for example, just to have DI recording for later, you can actually do that by assigning a direct box, which will then sound like shit. But that'll do the job for having a mic on one side for monitoring and recording DI sounds on the other for later IRing if you actually so wanted to do it. Again, you can switch on the actual pedal if you're in the practice room or something, don't have the app. But I mean, you got it on your phone anyway, so... So, let's quickly check between off-axis and on-axis. I got quite a bit of trouble in there. Uh, and again, you can just turn the mic EQ off. Other side sounds like so. That's a ribbon 121. That's pretty much, you know, your, your standard. Could do a 67. See what's happening here. My uh, EQ is not on, but there is an EQ. It's fairly straightforward. And you can get results rather quickly. Of course, a little bit of panning left and right. If you're going stereo, it's possibly a nice idea. <laughs> Now, let's close that all up so it's easier to see what's happening. Mic two. Then you've got the room mics. And again, you've got a level for the room, which is also on your pedal. And the panning. And a room EQ. Very nice. That's exactly 
like it is in the big ox, as it should be. Then we've got master EQ for everything. Same EQ. If you just need to take the top off of everything, you can. And then here comes the kick-ass <clears throat> compressor. I, for, especially for the cleans, I want some compression on all the time. After the fact, not going into the amp. That 112 all of a sudden sounds pretty damn nice. Huh? And it's an 1176 style, so you've got 4 h 20 and the all button mode. You can see you really want that on. I like for the room mics, I like the, uh, actually, not the ribbon, the condenser stereo is where it's at. Reverb control. How much? I mean, you can go crazy. Yeah. More subtle here. And then delay is really cool. You can go to chorus as well. Quite a few examples in the presets for you to explore with really cool effects and primarily based on you know classic songs. That's still a 112. Do exactly the same settings, but with a 212. with the built-in effects, isn't that Friedman pedal and the Ox Stomp pretty much the perfect fly rig? Because you got the effects, you, I mean, most of the effects you need for rock and roll and uh, right next to each other. However, no MIDI, uh, okay, so you're gonna have to, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's pretty, pretty bit. Uh, it's a pretty, uh, it's a bit harsh there. Let's see how quickly I can adjust that. Let's get the compressor down. <laughs> this really without looking through IRs minutely tweakable and if I wanted to of course <laughs> and so on now let's go for heavier things and see if the arc stomp can deliver there with a real amp. So now we're going to put it through the test. The test that it, in terms of presets, I think it fails. And that's why all the metal guys want to go to IRs by your Bogrens and Kohlers and Glens and Ownhammer and all that. I'm 100 million percent convinced if you go to the right speaker simulation, which they have, they have the V30s, that's, you know, whatever, and apply EQ to both microphones. You can absolutely get the sounds you want without having to go through a billion IRs. So let's try this. I'm taking my most metal instrument, the Mayonnaise Duvel Katsi John Brown X signature model. My God, look at this guitar in there. Don't even like red. The cat approves. Also thinks it wants to destroy the world. Um, and I'm going into the rev generator. You can clearly see the sound I just made. Sounds not so good with that. <laughs> How am I going into it? Well, I'm going with the rev uh, through my amp switcher by Ampete into the Red 7 Amp Central, which is one of the premier load boxes slash IR loaders. It does that. It also has uh, effects loop and loads of other things, but I'm going line out from the Amp Central. Why am I using the Amp Central? Because the Amp Central has a, a definitely better uh, reactive load than, for example, the OX has. What is reactive load? The load box simulates what kind of cap is behind your amp. And that's how the amp reacts, and you feel that. Now, the amp central is going for a big 412 classic -y rock big sound, whereas I think the OX is going for a smaller speaker. Um, so the amp central really gives you the, uh, the, the feeling of a big speaker, then line out into the aux stomp. So I'm loading down this Rev Gen 120 Mark III, which of course has a Captor X built in if you wanted that. But I'm loading it down with the Amp Central. And of course, I could also take the Fryette Power Station, as I mentioned before. So any kind of load box, if it's good, will do the job. Then going, I mean, depending on what kind of reactive load you like. In the power station, I can actually tweak the reactive load as you could, for example, in the uh, TAE uh, by Boss, the tube amp expander. I've got one in Studio B. So here, not so great. We're gonna go to a 
mean sound and try to tweak that. This is a long video. Let's go to the last preset and switch that to something that they already think is heavy. For the love of Steve, I mean, that's like... Because it's got the effects. But we're gonna go into the factory stuff and let's go to the B30s. I mean, that's massive. Using the gate on the amp is a good idea. Clearly too much room there, but we can fix that with a knob. Apparently at uh, UA they think metal sounds are all very roomy and boomy. They clearly have no idea about the modern side, which is fine, you can. So we're gonna go and take that as a as a as a baseline, why not? Gonna see what they picked. That is the beat oh, well yeah of course. So we're gonna go and turn the delay off. Pan shit in the middle. And we're gonna do it mic by mic, so we're gonna turn mic two off. I'm thinking a 57 is a good idea. I like. It's got that bite. So we're gonna go get my one down. We're gonna see what we can pair that with. With the V30, I usually pair it with a condenser, so we're good there. That's not bad at all. Let's check the off on axis there. That should fill in my 57 rather nicely, I think. Now, is that the most amazing metal sound there is? 
I would have to actually figure this out in a mix. I feel like the amp right now is pushing way too much gain. But you can see how absolutely tweakable it is. You don't need to go and find a million different IRs. You have a nice range of caps right there. <laughs> So you got everything you need in the app. Tweak it, make your sounds. I literally have two sounds in the AUX. I've got the 412 Cranberg loaded cap with a 57 and a ribbon, and I've got a V30 for the heavier things, which I would have to go into my software and you know see if I can get uh, that translated into the AUX stump. And uh, that's for the heavier stuff. And that's literally the two settings I have plus effects on and off. Now on the big ox, on the real ox, on the, 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 you know, the old ox, there's the issue of no community online at all. You can use an app, you can use uh, desktop software to program it. However, there is no saving those presets on your desktop or iPad or whatever. The presets are all stored in the box. If you want to have them on a different ox from that box, you have to start over programming it, which is why I took screenshots of everything and had to program it three times on the other auxes that I have, which is really dumb. There is no saving presets anywhere other than on the actual box, not even on your computer, to share them with your friends. In here, there's factory, there's save my preset, there's user. I have a hunch that it's the same thing. I have a hunch that you might not be able to get them off the thing. So if you want to use the same settings someone else has, you have to ask them bit by bit for each bit, each each bit, for each bit, for each bit of the settings. Maybe, I don't know, I could be wrong, what do I know? However, and now we're done. <coughs> thank you, <coughs> thank you. Sound-wise, I think this is the shit. Effects, compressor, a range of speakers, everything. It is what we've wanted. Stereo, it's what we've wanted. How many boxes out there are doing full stereo? Stereo in, stereo out. Now, is it dumb that it doesn't have MIDI? Yes. Is it, is it dumb that you maybe cannot share a uh, preset? Is it dumb that it doesn't have a oh, headphone out? Oh, that's, I wanted to try that. Um, yes, all, all of it. It's all dumb. But I think this is the game changer. I think this is the superior box. And I know my friends from Two Notes will hate me, but tonally, that's it. The room, that's it. The effects, who can compete with this? The UA, delay, compressor, and reverb. You literally, I mean, you don't need anything other when it comes to delay, compressor, and reverb, if you ask me. But what do I know? I'm gonna try uh, headphones. I don't have the adapter, which means I'll only hear it on one side, but let's see if it's loud enough. Maybe they're right and you don't need a headphone out. Okay, it works. It's a bit trebly, it's a bit fizzy on the top, but that might be the frequency response of the headphones, of course. It, it works. Uh, can you pump Bluetooth music into it to jam to an elevated jam track with it? No, you can't. Aux input. The thing has Bluetooth, but not Bluetooth audio. Boo. There's, there's just stuff that when they designed these a few years ago as a platform for a whole range of pedals that they missed. Bluetooth audio and headphone out is a biggie. Aux in? I mean, no, you couldn't just put something from your phone into the input because it would also, if you did that, run through the speaker simulation. So. This is a jam device, uh, this isn't. But for anyone looking into buying an aux, if you don't mind the cabling and the extra power supply and all that stuff that you need, running something like the Amp Central, or which can also then load IRs, or the Fryhead Power Station, 
as your load box. Fred Power Station will only be a load box and attenuator, then give you a DI out into the aux dump, which then is your simulator. We'll actually run you the same money as a full-size aux, but give you the best attenuator on the market because the Fried Power Station literally is a tube power amp. It'll solve a lot of other problems. So I'm kind of thinking with the price increase of the aux and the release of this, they kind of outpriced themselves out of the market because unless you like the limitations of the big aux, why wouldn't you buy a Fried Power Station or something similar? or an Iron Man attenuator from Tone King at 800 bucks, and then you're at 1200 and not 1500 and you've got a killer attenuator, better than the attenuator in the actual aux. Um, however, well, you wouldn't have optical out. It's all about what you want to do and how you want to plug it in and use it. And there isn't yet the perfect box. But by combining this, with something else, let's say the amp central, which can also load IRs. See, all, when that's clocking at eight something, plus this, and that's also, wait, the amp central is not an attenuator. No, it isn't. It's just the load box. Ooh, <laughs> oh, it's difficult. Hmm. The, the perfect load box slash speaker simulator still doesn't exist. That literally has everything. But by being able to combine the aux stomp with some of the existing ones, you're getting pretty damn close. And combining that, even with the amp pedals from UA, those pedals get better. If you ask me, and I'm sorry to say that, sorry TC who made IR Loader, and sorry uh, Two Notes, I love you guys, you know I love you guys, but this, to me, is the thing you need to get past. This is the new benchmark when it comes to speaker simulator pedals. With the built-in effects, every other company will have the hardest time to compete with that. Is it 430 bucks at the moment? Yes. Is that quite expensive? Yes. Is it the one to get right now? Fuck yes. I'm saying this with my full conviction, not because they paid me, you, well, you, you know, that's how it works. If, if, if you think that's why I'm saying that, then go away. Um, I put links below. Please use them. Please support me on all the socials. That helps. Numbers matter. And we're going to put animals at the end, as always. Mm -hmm.